Thank you for joining me today. I'd actually like to show you how to get some lovely texture going on with a watercolour painting. Um, this is one that I was working on yesterday and I've done a lot of the background from a beautiful reference photograph that was lent to me by a, a friend and who's an excellent photographer. And I love these sheep bottoms as they're heading away from me. Um, and I, I really feel it's sort of like a homeward bound setting. I've done the, the heads of the sheep, as you can see. And these are the colours that I'm actually going to use now for the wool. Um, there's a mixture of greys and an ochre sort of colour because I've noticed from the photo that there are different shades. So these are the two watercolour inks, uh, a light and a darker grey, which you can see merge quite nicely together and work with the ochre colour. And the ochre is one of the, the uh, literally out of the tube and it's just one that's in my palette from day to day. And I may mix it with a little bit of white or a little bit of brown uh, just to add in to get the colours. The texture paste that I've used is the watercolour ground, the white watercolour ground by Daniel Smith. And it's very useful. You can apply it with a palette knife if you wanted to get some straightish lines. Or I've actually used this time um, a filbert brush to put the, the paste on with. It's very fluid, so you can actually put a layer, let it dry and then put a little bit more on if you wish. And further round on this picture, you'll see where the brick wall, the stone wall is. I've also put some there. I've worked on this part and it's given me some really nice texture. The watercolour works really well with it. So we're going to have some fun with this sheep. So I'm just wetting basically the area that I like. You can see the roughness of the texture and the water will work around it and across it. And then the inks and the paints will actually do different things, sinking in and moving it around. Around. So I'm just wetting it first and then I'm dropping in a little bit of the pale grey ink into various places and this is a question of building up what we want. I was quite surprised how much different colour there actually is in a sheep's wool. It is not white even though we tend to think of it as being white. So I hope that you will understand why I've used these different colours once you see them start to work together. They do have quite a good effect. And it means that you can actually add, as with watercolours generally, lots of layers. Once one layer has dried, you can add a little bit more colour. Or you can work um, wet into damp, wet into dry. They're brushing a little bit of the oak on, which gives a really sort of warm wool kind of shade. Uh, and it works so well with the grey. Just do be careful that you don't mix it with a grey, which then turns it green. This is why I do a splash practice or a little test practice just to get the colours correct. And you can dab the colour out if you feel it's gone on too heavily. It won't detract at all. Apologies for the siren there. I do live on a main road and this is one of the hazards, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, dropping in a little bit of the darker ink now because we've got the area around its tail and the lower part of its body. And so we're just keeping that ink moving. It's really nice. It moves about very easily with a little bit of water and you can move it into position quite nicely. I think you can see now that it's actually starting to build quite a good sort of shape, a good texture. I'm not looking for absolute detail, every little bit of wool strand. Um, this is a, an idea, this is something that will just hopefully make the eye realise that that's what it's actually looking at. Just soften down some of that little bit of black and pull that round the top of the sheep, give it a little bit of shape. The colours around it will actually help, so I will add a little bit more of the sort of road colour in as I go along once this is dry, just to make sure that it looks a little bit more sheep-like. So that's what I'm going to show you this, this afternoon or today. Um, we're working onto the bigger sheep. This gives us a lot more space to work on, lots more colours. Um, look at your photo, your reference photo when you do something like this and see where the light is actually falling. It's quite important. The tops of the sheep are obviously quite white and the further down you go, the darker they get. See how lovely it is when you put the drops of uh, ink into the damp paint already. It really just soaks it in beautifully and gives it that lovely, lovely texture. So making the shape around where his tail sits, his tail, her tail, not sure. And again with the ochre just to give that little bit of warmth into the wool. 
you can wash it out, you can thin it down. Really lovely to work on this watercolour ground. I'll put all the details into the comments so you can see what colours I've actually used and the watercolour ground. You can see as the paint and the ink sinks into the texture, into the watercolour ground, it leaves little highlights that are just really interesting texture. Most people don't realise that you can get interesting texture with watercolour. This is one method. Um, there are a couple of other methods which I will show you in other videos. But for today, I just thought it would be really nice fun just to build in these sheep into this almost finished painting. And then I will actually finish the wall and do all the other little bits and bobs as well. So now I've got all the detail in that I want on the actual sheep. I'm now connecting them to the road by using their shadow. And this is a, a nice wet mix of a neutral tint just to give that shape and form so that they're actually on the road. At least one foot will always be in contact with the shadow. Not necessarily all, but definitely one. We are portraying a sense of movement, so that's fine if there are a couple that aren't connected, but one must definitely be connected with that shadow. Just follow your reference photo just to get the right sort of size and shape and pull out the colour, adding depth wherever you need it. And we're getting very near finished here and I hope that you've enjoyed seeing what, what the texture can do. So this is the, the sort of shot that I wanted, the sense of the sheep moving along the road. And I will continue finishing off, but I hope you've enjoyed it. Many thanks for watching.